are proud to say that Black History lives here at Sister Circle, and we celebrate our culture 24-7, 365. But in honor of our history this month, we decided to examine our present and discuss making a difference for our future. That's right. And in our Bridging the Gap series this week, we're speaking directly to our future after chatting with the ladies of Spelman College a few months ago. We wanted to bring the conversation full circle and get the black male perspective. So we invited a few students from Morehouse College, future leaders of tomorrow, to find out what being young, black, and gifted is like for them in the world today. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here today. We're really excited to sit down yeah. to talk to the men of Morehouse oh, College. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You. Would you go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm John Bowers, a senior economics major, political science minor from Dallas, Texas, and I do serve as the student body president at Morehouse College. My name is Benny Williams. I'm a freshman political science major from Stockton, California, and I serve as a freshman student justice. Uh, my name is Alexander Cherry. I'm a senior marketing major from Woodbridge, Virginia, and I currently serve as the SGA vice president. I am R. Jordan Davis, a senior English major from Birmingham, Alabama, and I serve as the chief of staff. Oh, yes. Wow. We got the whole cabinet. Come here. on now. <laughs> <laughs> Feels very political. Yes, through. yes, yes. Um, but as we know, it's Black History Month, and I, I got to ask you, who um, is someone who, who's inspired you mm. throughout the years? As an aspiring attorney, I would have to say Judge U.W. Clemming. He was the first uh, African-American a federal judge to be appointed by President Jimmy Carter in Alabama, in my home state. And so he's been a legal giant for me and a legal mentor for me. And I'm so grateful to know him personally. Yes, awesome. that's great. That's, that's real good. That's real good. What about you, Alexander? Um, so I would say, I have two actually. So I'll say Angela Davis, mm. um, leader of the Black Panther Party. And then I would say Congressman John Lewis as yes. well, what he's been able to do in the state of Georgia um, and just the, the impact that he's had on the city of Atlanta. So being able to come to Atlanta and, and see that forefront, um, you know, I, I really love what Congressman John Lewis has been able to do. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So then I also, I think I have two as well. Okay. Um, firstly, Nelson Mandela, just for like the amount of like strive you've had for apartheid and like just the passion that you saw him fight for. Yes. But then secondly, my mother, uh, state representative, Retta Andrews Bowers, was the first black woman to be elected state representative in my hometown near Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Um, and like just seeing her raise me and all the things that she's been to pour, pour into me is something that I always think is really beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, two leaders that it's inspired me are Maxine Waters and the poet Langston Hughes. Mm. Um, Maxine Waters because of her courageous leadership and ability to stand up for justice and the black experience and how in America, we have to strive to do better and be better yeah. and just reflect it within ourselves. Well, you know, um, we just lost uh, Kobe Bryant along with his, his, his daughter and seven other people in the helicopter crash uh, that you know really was traumatic for the entire world, mm. uh, particularly on the campus at Morehouse College. When mm. you all went back to campus that day uh, after, could you tell us what the feeling was like in, in response to his, yeah. his passing? What did Morehouse do? Basically, what Morehouse did in the feeling was very distraught. Like, it felt, it felt really great outside. Like, there was like, really, even the weather changed. It was really weird. Um, when, Kobe, when we lost Kobe, students, we could really see students mourning him, like right away. So what the college did itself, they took upon themselves to get a group counseling session on a late Tuesday night, and had a group in our, one of our auditoriums for students to come um, and vent out their problems. But also, as from a student standpoint, our brother set up a basketball tournament for students to give back to the Mamba Foundation. That's awesome. Um, and all the money we raised, as well as just having that spirit in the spirit of Kobe, literally playing basketball, yeah. um, to be able to celebrate him and his legacy. Yeah, good, good. good. And what exactly does it mean to be a Morehouse man? Mm -hmm. I, I chose Morehouse because essentially I grew up in spaces where I wasn't comfortable to be myself. And knowing the history of Morehouse and the traditions and what Morehouse instills in you, I knew that Morehouse was the place I need to be to further my goals. Yeah. And a Morehouse man, for me, when I graduate, I plan to run for political office. So I see that Morehouse being that, that cultivating factor in my life and that catalyst to make sure that I stay on the right track yeah. and I stay true to who I am in my community. Yeah, and everybody that came before you. Yeah. So right. much rich heritage, yeah. so yes. much. Jordan, what about you? Why was Morehouse your choice? I grew up in a small community. I went to private school, and in my high school graduating class, I was the only black male in my class. Wow. And so to, I always knew I wanted to go to an HBCU. Right. It was really just 
which one? And Morehouse is the only institution that caters to black men in the world. And mm -hmm. so I figured, why not? This is where I'm supposed to be. I also want to run for political office uh, in the future. And just hearing of great names such as Cedric Richmond, mm -hmm. Bukhari Sellers. Yes. Um, as you mentioned, you know, the rich history and legacy that we come from, mm -hmm. I would just be remiss if I missed up or missed out on the opportunity to attend Morehouse College. We are approaching a very critical moment mm -hmm. uh, in, in history yeah. with the 2020 election. Uh, how many of you will be voting for the first time? Just Benny. Okay, so we've, we've been down this rodeo. What are you yes. all looking for uh, in, in our leader or who we, who we choose to lead our country? Let's, let's, let's ask you, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think for me, it's more about just the, uh, the our, our age group being able to understand what's in front of us with the election coming up um, and just choosing a leader that kind of represents us in a, in a manner that we would like to see. Yes. So as future leaders of tomorrow, what are some issues that are most important to you? What are some of your hopes, wishes, and also fears? Mm. My main two issues are climate change and criminal justice reform. I feel like in the future we need our earth. We need to be mm -hmm. able to live and sustain a healthy lifestyle and I feel that we need to contribute more to making sure that for future generations that we have a, a space for them to grow up and be healthy. And criminal justice reform, so often we see people who look like all of us, um, it feels like we're being attacked every day. So with criminal yeah. justice reform, it, it's sad. It's like, we don't, we feel, mm -hmm. like it, I don't know how to put it to words, it's just, some of you scared. feel hopeless, but right, yeah. you, you may feel hopeless, but you're, you're, you're in an environment at Morehouse mm -hmm. that can feed to the, the, the positive side of that and right. what you all are right. doing. What are Absolutely. you doing on campus to kind of touch on those issues and making sure our leaders know the message that are coming, that's coming from Morehouse men? So I'm actually a campus manager uh, of Morehouse College's chapter of Fair Fight U, which is a collegiate yes. extension yes. of Stacey Abrams' yes. organization, Fair Fight Action. Mm -hmm. And so our organization is working to ensure that students are aware of their polling places, voter education, but also making sure that they stay on the rolls. Mm -hmm. um, so voter protection. And so voting rights is a huge issue for me. Okay. I come from the voting rights state of Alabama. Um, and so it's a super huge issue for me. And that's one of the ways we are trying to engage students in this election. Yeah. Oh, that's Brother Jordan, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Jordan gets it in, right? He does. He does. Yes. Alex, how about you? Any um, issues? So I think the biggest issue for me would probably be voting rights, but I think for me, in a sense, it's more of the, the social media age and the millennials in this generation. So uh, just us being able to understand, like I said again, that, that voting is important. And for the, the first timers, like Benny, and for all those other first timers, just knowing that now that you have that right to vote, that you should definitely exercise that right, because we've seen instances where elections haven't gone the way that they should have. Mm, yeah. um, so I believe that it's, it's important for everybody to know, regardless of who they want to represent them or what their affiliation is, that that, that right to vote is very important in how we're going to move forward as a yes. country. Yeah. At this very moment where we are in uh, watching the, po the political race, do you all feel that there's anyone particularly speaking to you, uh, the millennials? I can respect you say no. Truth is true. Yeah, I can respect you say no. And we need to hear that. We um, need to hear that. Because, I mean, even, like we said, like, Jordan and I attending all the rallies, like, it was just a bunch of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't really hearing anything unique and distinctive to that candidate that I was like, okay, I really can understand, like, where you're coming from and what you want to do to affect our community and yeah. who we are. Let's talk dating. Okay. Mm. Is that a serious thing for you all right now at your time, in your, the time in your, in your lives right now, or you prefer to postpone? So I'll say for, for myself that I've kind of just been open about it. Um, I think it's just been one of those things where I've been able to, to culminate great relationships and great friendships with the women of Spelman and the women of Clark mm -hmm. to kind of just know that, that I have that, that backbone with them. Um, so I'm very supportive of all that they've been able to do for me. Um, and I think just going forward, it's just about making the right decisions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I've also kept myself open, but open to the fact that a person that I may like find a true partnership with will come and like will come at any time in my life yeah um and like i have a girlfriend and have a partner right now and i will say like i could see i'm excited to see how long we last it's not like traditional anymore because it's easier to just slide in somebody's dms but <laughs> <laughs> i love it no it, no honestly this is, this is <laughs> honestly speaking slide into the people's dm away. I mean, that, that's it's well, sliding dm culture now so yeah we we see it so often so but now i feel like us, we know what we want, so like we know 
our worth and mm -hmm. especially women nowadays know their worth. So Yeah, ain't no playing no games. No. Right. No. Right, right. Jordan, you got big plans for dating? Um, right now or you not know? right now. Yeah. I think culturally <laughs> we're a grinded out generation mm -hmm. And so we want to grind we want to get that job We want to chase the bag mm -hmm. and then think about all of that other stuff later on But I think to Alex's stuff. point yes All the adulting But to Alex's point, I think it's very important especially in this time mm -hmm. and in this age uh, that we're in to cultivate friendships yeah. and just, just kind of see where it goes. Where yeah, it goes. Yeah. I like that. Absolutely. Beautiful. I like that. Well, of course, we as your big sisters, uh, what is it that you need from women like me and Quad and Selena and Miss Trina? What, how can we pour into you? Or, or do you feel that there may be some form of a disconnect and mm. how can we bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. So I have I have two older sisters, one who's 30 and one who's getting ready to turn 29. Okay. Um, and they have truly been my backbone in the way that I've come up as a young African-American man. And so for me, I think that there's nothing that black women can do. I think it's about what black men can can give back to black women. That's right. And understand yeah. that that, lo that <laughs> love that love that you guys have been able to show and cultivate. That's right. And you know that that's something that that I carry true to myself and something that I, I want everybody to know that is very important in building those relationships. And so with my sisters, you know, I, I call them all the time, you know, just like to get advice because they have that perspective that mm -hmm. I might not have. Yeah. Just allowing us avenues to express our emotions yes. and allowing us spaces to be ourselves because often we don't have yeah. we don't have places to like talk about and how we vulnerable. feel mm -hmm. yeah and be vulnerable and yeah. show emotion because we have, like with that comes de like examining our definitions of masculinity mm -hmm. and how it is to be a man and how it's open you can be to express yourself. Is there still a lot of pressure on you, young men, to not show any vulnerability? Or have you come to terms with, that is a part of being a man. Where exactly are we uh, in your generation? Absolutely, I think we are evolving as a society, okay. um, as, a, as a cultural um, aware, culturally aware um, group of men who are more in tune with their emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think, because I have a little sister as well, I think it's so important for me to show both sides yeah. mm -hmm. and how, uh, what a man is actually supposed to do. They're not this one dimensional, one figured person, but they are, we're very complex, we're humans. Yes. And so we have an, an array of emotions and it's okay to show that, mm -hmm. but show it constructively. And I, and I think that's super important in this day and age to show the vulnerability um, of manhood and what it comes with. Yes, do you have questions for us? <laughs> Absolutely. I think for me, going back to what can men do to support our big sisters or our little sisters, if you all could just list some things that we can do to show you some support, show you some love, and just kind of give back to those who have given, back, given so much to us. Well, I think there's not really a list. You all are living my expectation mm -hmm. of what I see for young black men. Wow. You are doing exactly what I envision. The way you carry yourselves, how articulate you are, how beautiful you are, how open to vulnerability that you are, and the way that you carry yourselves. Mm -hmm. You're doing it. If this is any indication of what a Morehouse man is, I am super pleased. Yeah. So that was really, I mean, mm -hmm. they're very smart fellas, I gotta yeah. tell you, and they're very tuned into what they're looking for and what they want, whether if it's in, um, you know, dating or even in politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're doing some phenomenal things on the campus of Morehouse as well. Well, I think it's important that they ev they even care about politics. I know mm -hmm. Trina was talking uh, in the break about how, you know, happy she was about the fact that they they care. Actually, you, you said this um, before we went into it, how, that they care. And, and that's important because they're new voters. Mm -hmm. If you think about about it, you're going into college at 18 years old, you're fresh able to vote. Yeah, so one, there was one freshman and the yeah. other three were um, about to depart exactly. from, from school again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, the, but but before that, you know, the election is every four years, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah. It, yeah. they're fresh, yeah. you know, so it's good. Yeah. And he was talking about a list, but the, the thing that stuck out to me most was the fact that they're prepared to listen. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, they're, yes. they're willing to, to, to take that uh, information that they need and just, you know, maybe cultivate what they need to mm -hmm. in an effort to, to bring it to fruition. Yeah. I like it about these. Yeah, young and that's bridging the gap. I Look wish I had a 19-year-old niece or something. You know what? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you, you would hook, hook them yeah, up? Yeah, I would hook them up with more husband. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>
Well, listen, the conversations always continue on Sister Circle TV.